Belize, like a number of CARICOM countries, Jamaica, the Bahamas, Antigua and Barbuda, have agreed to be a part of the force in principle. The first requirement was this authorization by the United Nations Security Council that is now in place. The second is to understand the command structure that is going to be led by um, Kenya, the government of Belize, with the advice of the Belize Defense Force and the Ministry of National Defense and Border Security, would have to be satisfied that the command structure in place is satisfactory to them. Thirdly, all the logistics, costs and expenses related to Belize's presence would have to be uh, borne by some country or some organization. We would not be incurring any costs. Speaking to the Belize Defense Force, they say that they could uh, deploy up to 50, and that is what we have signaled, up to 50 people, um, if the circumstances are fine. Now, just to be clear, this matter is going to be considered by Cabinet and the appropriate authorities for final determination. In fact, I had a discussion this morning with one foreign government that was asking us what is Belize's list of requirements that are necessary to go in, what are the costs, etc. Et so I spoke with Minister Marin and that is being prepared. We had a preliminary uh, list for discussion purposes. We are now preparing our final list. Um, so when Kenya is ready, we will have to be satisfied that the circumstances, the arrangements in place, the cost uh, deferment is in place before Belize finally takes a decision to move forward. Uh, but we will discuss this in detail in Cabinet next week. Is there a, um, maybe a projection as to how long the mission will be? Right. Well, that's a very important point. Well, there are two important points. The first is how long will they be there? One of the issues that has to be discussed is what is the exit strategy? And we need to be satisfied that the exit strategy is clear and that Belize would exit when that uh, point is reached or before if we determine that it's time for Belize forces to come out. The second point is that insofar as uh, Belize is concerned, there has got to be a movement on the democratic side. The current government of Haiti under Prime Minister Henri um, is not legitimate. They were not elected. Uh, there have been no elections. In fact, he was appointed by the uh, President Moise um, in circumstances which are not, pretty, are not very clear and questionable. Uh, but they're the de facto government and they're the only ones who we have to um, you know, deal with. So we need to have movement on the democratic side so that we move towards elections. The final point on Haiti that I would make is this because I know that this is a matter of concern to Belizeans. The government of Kenya sent in an assessment team and they're about to send in another team. And they came away from that assessment with a very important conclusion. That is, they had intended to put up what we call a static force. That is, to just simply defend certain strategic uh, in, uh, assets. They have come out and said, listen, that's not going to work. You need to deal with the gangs. I think well, our recommendation to cabinet is that Belize will not be involved in that part. We will be there to you know, defend, um, let's say, for example, a gas depot or to defend the parliament or any particular asset that in a defensive posture, but not going out looking for gangs to engage them. So, we are waiting for final advice and recommendations from the security forces, the National Security Directorate, the Belize Defense Force, Coast Guard, etc., to see what is the final configuration for Belize. And we have to be satisfied that all the externalities are in place so that there is no um, cost to Belize and the loss of life or injury is absolutely minimized.